investment. Today we are going to talk about the components of investment. So there are three main components of private investment. One, non-residential fixed investment. So what is non-residential fixed investment? It could be uh, firms investing in equipments, firms investing in structures, or uh, firms uh, investing in intellectual property. All of that is an example of non-residential fixed investment. Right. What is residential fixed investment? So if the households are going to buy new houses, new housing by households, that is what the residential investment is. Inventory investment. So for example, I'm a firm and I have produced uh, some goods, but I have not sold them. So it's a part of my inventory investment. Right. Now we're going to take up the arbitrage argument which we have developed earlier and try to apply it here at the residential investment, right? So suppose there is an investor and uh, she has $20,000 to invest, right? She has $20,000 to invest. She can put this, uh, these $20,000 in a bank and earn some interest. So let's say I put uh, this $20,000 in bank and I earn interest R on this. So this is what my income from investing this in the bank or putting this in the bank, right? So this is what my return from saving the down payment. So why I'm calling this as a down payment? Because I also have an option of putting this $20,000 in buying a flat, right? So as a down payment for that, saving the down payment. Right, right now. What I can do is, <clears throat> I want to buy a house of 100,000 worth. Right. I have $20,000 as an amount with me right now, and I can put this as a down payment. And uh, I will take a loan of $20,000. Uh, right. I will take a loan of $80,000. Fair enough. So, this much of loan I want to have. Okay. So, what I can do is that uh, I will be taking a loan. So I have flat in my name. I can rent this flat. right? So the moment I rent this flat, that becomes an income for me. Fair enough. But out of that, there is going to be some depreciation on the house. right? So whatever the price of house is, on that, there is some depreciation which is going to go there and it will be deducted from uh, from my rental income. In a way, I'm just thinking in my heart. Uh, I'm just thinking in my head uh, uh, what is going to be my return if I invest it in the flat. Then I have purchased the house at some price today. I can sell it at a higher price tomorrow. Or if the conditions are not good, then I have to sell it at the lower price. So whatever is the capital gain or capital loss, that is what delta P of house. That is what delta P of house. Achha, dusri thing is that this mortgage interest. So I'm taking a mortgage of how much? I'm taking a loan of how much? $80,000. So this uh, interest on this $80,000, that is tax deductible. Right? So I can reduce it from this. So first of all, this is going to be there. This is the uh, price of the house minus, you can say, down payment. So this much is the mortgage which I have, which I have taken. And, and the mortgage interest is tax deductible. Mortgage interest
is tax deductible. Right? Uh, where tau is the tax rate. This guy is the tax rate, tau. That is the tax rate. Fair enough? So this is what my return from investing in a flat. Listen, guys. So the return. from investing in a flat, right? So where these two are equal, uh, from there I can get the price of the house, okay? So inventory investment is going to occur if you're going to produce more what you can sell, then what you can sell. So this might be the case that why do you want to why do you want to produce more than what you can sell? This happens generally in the good times. So in good times when the demand is already high, you generally produce more than what you can sell, right? So there are several motives which are given. One of the motive motive which is given is production smoothing. Production smoothing. So. What do you mean by production smoothing? Production smoothing is when the demand is already high, it is very, very costly to ramp up production, to increase production there and then, right? So firms, they generally wish to produce more than what they can produce or what they can sell, right? So during the high times, during the uh, good times, they will produce more. They know that their demand is also more. They will be able to cover up that also. But during bad times, they would want to produce less than what they can sell. So whatever which has been produced but not sold during good times, that could be used now. That is what production smoothing is. right? The another uh, reason is the pipeline theory. This theory says that the firms, they are holding up the inventories as a part of the production process itself. So what they say, they give an example of the laptop uh, production. And while producing laptops, you need chips, you need keyboard, you need this and that whatsoever. So when the demand for the laptops is going to increase, right, the its collection of components will also naturally rise. So these are the different components of laptop. And when the demand for the laptops is going to increase, its collection of components is also going to rise. So that is what the pipeline theory is. There is one more motive of holding inventory, which is called the stock out Avoidance. If the customer wants to buy a thing, you don't want to say, no, we don't have it. So when the customer wants to buy anything, you should be having that particular product. You should not be saying, no, no, we don't have it. So firms generally want to avoid that we do not have enough stock. So stock out avoidance. This is not what the firms want. So they generally build up inventories, right? So this is what, uh, these were the different parts, the components of private investment. I hope this was of some use to you.